how you doing? You know, back in the old days, you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone farted. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. Mm. Mm. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? Mm. 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 What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. What language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Jimmy! <laughs> oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. Oh, cool, that's nuts! You uh. can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely, that's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it! This is my work phone, I have to! No, you don't. <laughs> Special Agent Straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. 
Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how do you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% mock-up is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. <laughs> It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. And a oh. boy, McCool. Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo. Open the door. Tutty got shot in the ass. Again. Oh, crap, it's the Gambini crew. Dino, kick it in. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. Who are you? Where's the regular doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your sort and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no... Picture. Damn it, my ring came off. Yeah! Oh, see what you made me do, you nosy bastard? Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar or the contusion so we don't get necrotic fasciitis? I. I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole. Oh, of course. You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Guys, get in here! I got Jimmy Falcone!
Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints Kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him! And kill anyone he's with! And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up! Come on, Dino! Let's go punch something! <sighs> <laughs> Quit flopping around! I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Hit me! Hit me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? You're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find his get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where are you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up. What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron. See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? You forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh, smells like New York back here. Oh, so you're the one who was smoking, Teresa? You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no. I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Pop are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah! The guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it. Going to Harvard, bye. Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York. Somebody give him some hay or something. <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus, H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. 
Jesus, Cheech. Who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this. I think we can totally do this. Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this. It's a beautiful morning at Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama! I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Whoa, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still. Leo, you gotta see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing. For three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle, my brother, Paulie, the brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage. No thanks. We got to retool. Maybe do out-of-town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. 
I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, now known as McDougal. They say there's two things you can't avoid in life, death and taxes. Wise guys don't pay taxes, which only leaves death. Back in the old neighborhood, the funeral home was doing great business. The guy who ran the place was rolling in dough, strutted around like he owned a frickin' neighborhood. <clears throat> so, we took over the joint. <clears throat> You're fired. <laughs> At first, it was great, but after a while, my guys were so busy working funerals, none of them were out on the street causing the funerals. I realized you can be a gangster or an undertaker, but you can't be both. Now I live in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is about as much fun as a funeral home. And it's got more stiffs. <laughs> I actually find Regina relaxing. Petey, this town's D-O-A. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. And I am sick and tired of your shenanigans. Every time you and Cheech get into one of your mishaps, Canadian taxpayers have to foot the bill. You're making a mountain out of moleskin, McCool. Calm down. I will not. You are on very thin ice here, Jimmy. Okay, okay, I see what this is about. How much we talking? That is hardly going to cover the cost of this latest debacle. What debacle? It's a couple of cows. This is gonna be great. We're gonna have steak on demand. I pumped them full of steroids, so they're extra beefy. Sorry, Jimmy, but my superiors were very clear on the matter. One more mistake, one more hijink, one more incident, and you will be expelled from witness protection. Good day to you, sir. For Canada! where there is a limit to the taxpayer's goodwill. You go. 
guys won't believe what happened. Petey got a date? Pfft, no, I got a summer job. No way. Good for you, kid. I remember my first job. I made a mint off that blue-tinted peanut brittle. What kind of job is it? That's what I want to know, but Teresa won't tell me. Well, I could tell you. Or I could show you. I don't like this. Suppose her summer job is whacking us. You been drinking paint dinner again? Think about it. She tricks us with this BS job story, drives us to the middle of nowhere, and pow! Remind me to compliment her before I put one in a dimple. That's my firstborn you're talking about! If anyone's gonna shoot her, it'll be me. All right, take off the blindfolds. Holy crap! We're all the way back in New York! Teresa, were you speeding? What did we say about speeding, young lady? It's like a dream! Except Mama's not chasing me with the knife! I knew it! She set us up! Ah, it's good to be back. And cut! What? That's a wrap! We're not actually in New York. I got a job on a big Hollywood movie filming right here in Regina. So this is a set? What's the movie? It's called Wise Guys vs. Aliens. That sounds arty farty. Wait, was there a casting couch involved when you got hired? No, I'm just an assistant. It's actually a really easy job. Standing around all day sure is hard on your feet. Please, take my chair. I'll sit on the floor. Oh, thanks, Mr. Spielberg. I better get to work. I got ten long hours of sitting, eating, and texting ahead of me. Kid sounds like an old pro already. Come on, let's take a look around. Wait, I know this door. Rizzo! Open up or I'll break your legs. You still owe me a C note. Rizzo! Rizzo! Rizzo's been dead for ten years, you moron! Nice try, Rizzo. What do you want, Kojak? I ain't touching that. What is it? I'm talking to you, Professor X. Wait, Gina, that's a Buddhist monk. He don't talk. I think he's on mute. It's called a vow of silence. Dear parent or guardian, a vision has foretold that a child in this home may be the reincarnation of the Bali Lama. The who, the what now? The Bali Lama. It's just like the Dalai Lama, except from Bali. Wow, I always knew I was special, but not this special. I am honored. What? Her? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. High priest will soon arrive to determine the veracity of the vision. Please prepare. I ain't giving no priest no eye test, you got it? Now get the hell out of here! Jackpot, 50 Gs. That's Indonesian money. It's only worth five bucks. Says the guy who is not the Baldi Lama. <laughs> Jesus! Canadian coffee tastes like dishwater filtered through dirty underpants. Get me an espresso! Mm. You know, I could get used to all this movie magic. And by magic, I mean free sandwiches. Hey, look at this. I've been here ten minutes, and already I got a trailer. Why do you get a trailer? What kind of low-rent flick is this? Hey! Get out of my trailer! If anyone should be banging a bimbo in that Winnebago, it's me! Relax, it's probably just some guy with the same name as you. You mean like my evil twin? Cheech, look back on your life. If you was twins, you would not be the good one. Freaking goody two-shoes, always stealing my girls. Did I ever tell you ladies about the time when my nephew, Jimmy Falcone, whacked the DA with a frozen fish? We knew the cops were gonna be onto us, so to get rid of the evidence, we ate the fish! Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, speaking of... What just happened? I never met that guy in my life! And I never killed nobody with a fish! I just fed him to live ones. This is identical theft! That son of a bitch is pretending he's me! And he's not even as handsome. Yo, Petey, I've been thinking about it. I'm gonna do this thing. You know, with, uh, butt monkeys. Buddhist monks. Yeah, that's the one. Religion's a cash grab, and I want a piece. 
I just need to fool them monks long enough to start bilking my followers. You know what? I think I'll help you. You? Mr. Squeaky Clean No Balls? Why? Because I think the simple, gentle wisdom of the Buddha may just penetrate your heart. Like water through cracks in stone. Whatever. But if you screw this up, I'm gonna crack you with a stone. All right, Jimmy. I'm calling in every favor you owe me. Help me whack this scumbag. Since when do I owe you any favors? He's disrespecting a Falcone name and he's making money off it. Which kind of makes me respect the guy. Cheech, what the hell are you doing? Phony Cheech is about to go to work for Industrial Light and Tragic. <gasps> Teresa, watch out! <coughs> it's okay, it's okay. Teresa's fine. Yeah, we're gonna need five more Canadians. All right, you moron. How'd you steal my face? Whoa, Cheech Falcone, what are you doing here? Hey, Jimmy, since we're playing the name game, you mind telling us yours so we can put it on your tombstone? It's me, Enzo, uh, f from Brooklyn. I narrow it down a little, I know like 50 Enzos from Brooklyn. Enzo Pistone. I ran Pistone's Pizzatorium. Uh, you guys ordered from me all the time. Why you into personating Cheech? Ah, it's like this. I always wanted to be a director in Hollywood, but who's gonna hire a guy that smells like anchovies? So take a shower. When you guys disappeared, I got an idea. I moved to LA, shaved my head, slapped on a mustache, and pretended to be Cheech. <laughs> what are you, insane? Why Cheech? There's no way I could pull off being you, Jimmy. I don't smoke. Anyway, I got a job as an advisor on mob movies. They call me Il Consultieri. The hell do you know about being a good fella? Nothing. I just tell them stuff I know from other mob movies. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm -a gonna shoot you. I'm a shooter, you! You do realize there's a contract out on Cheech. So what? I'm in Hollywood. They're great at keeping secrets. Especially once you join Scientology. What's this? <laughs> it's a sweet gig, Jimmy. I get free food, they pay me in cash. I got a fancy car to drive, and a hotel room you wouldn't believe. Congrats, Enzo. You just got some partners. He had me at free food. This is called a sand mandala. It's an exercise in the transitory nature of life. I guess it's pretty easy to impress them boobists. Mother f Why'd you do that? Now I gotta start over! Gina, the picture is no longer a picture, but the sand remains sand. This kindergarten crap ain't gonna cut it. If we're gonna oppress these monks, we gotta do something big. Like a steak dinner and a couple of hookers. All right, Enzo, here's the deal. Me and Cookie are gonna spend a couple of nights here living in the laps of luxury. And I'm gonna live in your trailer. I mean, my trailer. And where am I supposed to sleep? They gave you a car, didn't they? I'm above the line. I can't sleep in my car like uh, some kind of teamster. Enzo, don't kid yourself. Your days in Tinseltown are numbered. I saw a clip from this flopperoni pizza you're cooking up. I'm -a gonna shoot to you. Don't look at me. It's them hack Hollywood writers. <laughs> much fun! I ain't been this relaxed in months! Exploiting another human being for my own amusement just melts the tension. 
Must be the bellhop with the new bed. Took him long enough. Oh! Uh, is that the guy whose car we hit with the TV? Nah, Canucks don't shoot. They just give you a respectful talking to. I think Hollywood Enzo ratted us out. Why are we running? You could have took that guy. I left my gun in my pants. Like you need a gun. True, but I don't fight naked. Learn that lesson from one nut nunzio. Ah! Turn around. I don't want the whole world seeing your cans in my sausage. Whoa, memory foam really works. I'm still not tipping them. You tried to have me killed. What are you talking about? Don't act all innocent, you little rat. You called the mob on me, didn't you? Really? Why would I do that? I might be a liar and a faker, but I ain't no backstabber. If I was, I'd already be directing movies. Well, watch your back, Francis Fraud Coppola. Cause someone's after you. A guy just shut up your hotel room. Time for me to make my exit. If that guy went to the hotel, he'll probably go to my trailer next. Cheech! We gotta warn Cheech! Oh no, Cheech! My uncle, my friend, my bookie. That mooch owed me 20 grand! <laughs> you happy now, pizza guy? You got my uncle killed! Sure, he might have been a moron, but he was my moron! Ah, uh, Jimmy, there'll be other morons, you'll see. Not like Cheech, there won't. When they made him, they broke the mold. Probably in shame, but still! I swear to God, if I had my gun, I'd shoot you. But as it stands, I gotta choke you. I don't know if I'll gotta. <laughs> What did he do? Stay out of this, Cheech! Cheech! I thought you was dead! Dead? Ah, I just went out for some chewing gum and condoms. <laughs> Canadian gum tastes like rubber. <gasps> my own! My girls! They were all in there! Candy, Sherry, Brittany, and Ethel! Poor Ethel! She was ugly, Jimmy, but willing. So willing! <laughs> It's true! My little sister is the reincarnation of the Bali Lama! That's Ms. Bali Lama to you. How did you do that? Gina, you can't fool those monks. You're either the Lama or you're not. When them guys get here, keep your mouth shut, or the Queen of Peace is gonna cut you. Jimmy, we need to call McCool. No way! McCool's been on my case, and I don't want to rock the boat. I can handle this. But what if the hitman recognized us at the hotel? It was dark. We was naked. Trust me, he wasn't looking at our faces. I think I'm gonna go back to L.A. to focus on my directing career. If I ever get a movie made, I'll invite you all to the premiere. I'll need a plus four. Ethel and the girls are gonna need some cheering up when they get out of the burn ward. You ain't going nowhere. You're laying low here until we're sure that hitman's out of town. And the kids should stay home, too. Teresa! She's at work. James Cameron gave her a lift. Nice guy. Drives a submarine. <sighs> Ooh, pretty. Stop moving, stupid necklace! <laughs> Funny, whenever I'm in this position, there's a necklace involved. Hello? Um, Daddy? There's a man here who says he's gonna shoot me unless you and Cheech give yourselves up. Oh, and did you know there's a guy on this movie named Cheech Falcone? Weird, huh? You tell that son of a bitch not to lay a finger on you. Hurry, Daddy. He's treating me real brutal. What did he do to you? He took away my chair and won't give me a latte. Man, that kid's really gone Hollywood. If bullets start flying, Cheech, you hit the deck. Enzo, you're my human shield. Okay. Wait, what? It means he trusts you. 
Whatever it is, McCool, I don't have time. There's been a number of incidents, Jimmy. A hotel shooting, an explosion on a movie set. Please tell me you're not involved. Define involved. So, instead of reporting the possible breach of security, you exploit the situation for some cheap thrills. And free food. Don't forget the free food. I have to call in the special tactical team. This is going to cost thousands. Jimmy, I am so angry with you, I could... Jeez, I thought Canadians were supposed to be nice. And you can kiss witness protection goodbye. Even if we get the hitman, every good fella in North America will be gunning for you. Or will they? Gentlemen, I's got an idea. And? Spit it out, Scorsese. Jimmy, first rule of directing, dramatic tension. All oh, right. I don't get it. The high priests apologized. The vision was mistaken? No! The vision was right! I'm the freaking Bali Lama, I swear to God! You guys believe in God, right? Because I'm him! Her! It! You need a mint. <laughs> Stupid girl! You're not the Bali Lama! You're the embodiment of evil! Ah, sh! A 30 year vow of silence down the crapper. No! What did I do? I hope you get reincarnated as a tapeworm in a starving donkey. Gina, look! They had the right vision, but the wrong address. Should we tell them to come back? Nah, f that guy. Hi, Daddy! Hi, honey! We'll have you out of there in a minute. He says to drop your guns. First, he lets you go. Guns first! Why don't he just tell us himself? He's self-conscious about his accent. And he likes my perfume. Wait! I believe this is the man you're looking for. You were sent here to kill Cheech Falcone, and this is Cheech Falcone. You bastard! You got my best friend killed! Again! So what? You morons ruined the perfectly good scam I had going. I'm gonna shoot you! They are all dead. Enzo, you might be a terrible technical advisor, but you are one hell of a director. Thanks, Jimmy. Looks like we're in the clear. The mob thinks you're dead, and I didn't have to report anything. All's well that ends well. Hey, what about me? I took a real bullet. Yeah, but you had a bulletproof vest. I took it off. It was clammy. Piston Productions. What? Really? Oh, no way. Thanks. I just got offered a directing gig on a Canadian movie. Congrats, pal. Good luck. We should probably take him in. He knows too much about us. No need, Jimmy. He's directing a Canadian film. He'll never be heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm Gina Falcone. You can put a gun to my head, but I ain't calling myself McDougal. My pop used to be the capo in a New York crime family. That was great. Everywhere I went, I was treated with respect. Hey, Gina, good to see you, kid. Here's a hundred. Get yourself a lollipop. I talked with that dentist of yours. You won't be getting any more cavities. That was all about to end, because anyway. my uncle Cheech started shooting his mouth off. The Don ordered a hit on him, but my pop didn't have the stones to do it. So while pop was begging the Don to spare Cheech's life, I decided to make my bones and take Cheech out. And then, Pop had to go and screw it up. I guess Pop
cop did have stones, just not a lot of brains. And that's how we wound up in Lady Part Saskatchewan. It's okay to say it, sweetie. Regina. But if you think I like being here, you can fucking. Oh, language! What the fuck's wrong with you? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Are your fingers tired at the end of a long day? They are. Are you still dialing the phone by hand? I am. Do you sometimes not point because you just can't be bothered? That's me. I hate pointing. With Superfinger, you'll never have to lift a finger again. Oh, that's handy. Oh. Fingery. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also scratches, pokes, taps, and picks. It's super. Now 1-800-FINGER-ME-NOW. Welcome to Superfinger. Enter your credit card number now. Wait a minute. We don't have a credit card. Enter your credit card number now. I said I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash? Sure. Really? No. I'll give you a super finger. Jimmy, do you know what I do all day when you're at work? That's between you and Dr. Oz. I drive around town paying our bills in cash. I'm tired of living like this, and I'm sick of lugging this around. Don't you think it's time we got a credit card? What are you talking about? You got lots of those. None with my real name on them. Besides, McCool took them away. Like it's a crime to use someone else's credit card. Ah, you don't want one of them. What if someone steals it? Buys an Asian bride off the internet? You bad man! You promised better life! Jimmy, I want to live beyond our means, like normal people. All right, Cook. If you want a credit card so bad, I'll get you one. How the hell do you get a credit card? It's easy. You steal a lady's purse, you take her card. Bada boom, bada bing. I mean legitimately. I got nothing. Oh, for Christ's sake, you open a bank account! Fine! I'll dig up the nest egg and put it in the bank! You don't gotta yell. Cheech, get me a shovel. No problem. Ming, jam what cha? Get your own damn shovel! In layman's terms, the annual percentage... Jeez, I never been in a bank for more than three and a half minutes. Boy, I miss those days. Saul, what do you think, sir? I think I could take this place in about two and a half. I meant in terms of interest. Hey, I'm here, ain't I? So did you want the low risk interest rate of 0.1% or did you want to lock it in at six? So I can have 0.1 or 6%. That's right. I'll take the six and you better have it by Friday. Sorry, old habits. <laughs> Your deposit slip? My life savings for a piece of paper and they call me a gangster. Holy shit, I'm rich! Cookie! I got you a little something. Yes! A credit card! My favorite piece of plastic that doesn't vibrate. Listen up, everyone. I learned a valuable lesson at the bank today. We're richer than we think. What are you talking about? It's easy. You had the nest egg I dug up from the yard with the money I stashed under the furnace minus the cash I sent to that Nigerian prince, and it equals... We're rich! Yo, 
Jimmy, you gotta try this caviar and truffle sandwich. It's 600 bucks every time I take a bite, and it tastes just like chicken. Nah, I'm too full from the narwhal soup. We didn't spend too much yesterday, did we? Not at all. We bought mostly essentials. Ain't that right, Percy? What the hell? My credit card's declined. Last time someone declined me, I put their head in a vice. Run it again. Same thing. <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem? I'll tell you the problem. I got some moron up my ass asking what the freaking problem is. I don't believe this. Jimmy, give me some cash. Any chance we could run a tab? A super finger! Oh, I so want one of those. Mr. McDougal, your money is locked in for a period of no less than six months due to the high interest rate. I explain this all to you in great detail. Isn't there anything you can do? How about a loan? You know we're good for it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal, but our records indicate that you recently went on an insane spending spree and are now a significant credit risk. Jimmy, what are we gonna do? What did he say, Cook? Holy crap! We're broke? So now that all my money's locked up, I need you to float me for the next six months. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it's against witness protection rules. After we set you up with your first job, your financial well-being is your own concern. I would love to offer you a personal loan. That's great! But I'm afraid I'm on a strict budget. Not only do I support Horse, myself, and a village of Bushman orphans, but every remaining dollar goes to my poor aging mother and her insanely expensive Bengay addiction. So you can't do nothing for me? Oh, contraire, my friend. I can give you something even better than money. More money? No. A money tree? No. A money factory? No. What the hell is better than money? If you see happiness or religion, I'm out of here. A vigorous pep talk. <laughs> At times like this, a man has to reach deep down inside himself to find out what makes him a man. To find wherein lies the root of his true character. Let me read you a letter from one of my orphans. <clears throat> Jimmy? Horse? Back to the zoo with you, mister. All right, everyone, listen up. It looks like we're having a small cash flow problem. If someone ain't paying up, I say go for the knees. Nah, Gina. Your mother thinks we gotta live economical for a while. So we're gonna have to cut back on a few things. Teresa, that means no new clothes. You mean no new clothes today, right? Gina, no betting on long shots. But old glue factory in the fourth is looking real good. And Cheech, no more booze for a while. Well, I had a good run. Someone spot me a bullet, I'll pay you back. This is great! Now we can implement all the green initiatives I've been suggesting. It'll force us to reduce our carbon footprint. We have to buy smaller shoes now, too? Screw this! I know how to make money. Teresa, you will not have sex for money. Mom! This is so unfair! Now you kids listen to your mother. I gotta run. I'm teeing off in an hour. Jimmy, you march right down to that tourism bureau and get your job back. And you can forget about golf. No more golf! Gee, I'm calling sloppy seconds on that bullet. Hey! Can't believe we have to ride the bus. We're turning into those people who bring bags to the store because they can't afford plastic. Mass transit is good for the environment and reduces CO2 emissions. This is so unfair. How could Daddy expect us to live on zero dollars a day? That's almost nothing. What's the matter with you two? You've been living off a of pop like forever. Me? I've been earning for myself since preschool. You want something in this life? You take it. Simple as that. She's right. Not about the stealing, of course, but there are things we can do to make our own money, like collecting bottles for recycling. Really? Tell me more. Well, recycling saves resources, reduces smog... <laughs> the money part. They pay for bottles so we can earn money and save the planet at the same time. Driver? Take me to where we save the planet! Sure! It's one stop past where we end world hunger. Stupid kid. Morning! Um, Jimmy? I don't think you... Sorry, can't talk. A lot of work to do. Gotta put the old nose in the grindstone, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. But didn't you quit? What? 
quit? What are you kidding? I love this job. I love whatever it is we uh, do here. I'm sorry, but you were very clear that you wanted to terminate your employment. Toby, that's not my ass. My ass is in color. Jimmy, as much as I'd like to give you your job back, we've already hired someone else. <laughs> so fire him. No can do. Last time I did that, his union was all over me. So, did Toby give you your job back? Yeah, Cheech. My first day back, and he gave me the day off. Well, looks like I gotta find some other job. Good thing you got the day off. You don't know what it's like out there, Jimmy. It's doggy dog. People killing each other to climb the corporate ladder. You look the wrong way, somebody stabs you in the back. Hey, wait a minute. You know exactly what it's like out there. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one of them CEO jobs where I can screw up and ask for a bailout. I'm gonna get a job, too. Atta boy, Cheech. You think I got a good voice for phone sex? Yo, Ma, are we poor? No, Gina, we're not poor. We're just a little light right now. That's an actual thing? I thought it was something Deadbeat said when they don't want to pay. No, it's an actual thing. So, if you're not poor, why are you buying all this generic crap? Grumpy green giant, hamburger hindrance, room temperature pockets? Who buys this stuff? Immigrants and hobos, honey. Don't forget the elderly. No one's talking to you, toots. Teresa, just because it's called dumpster diving doesn't mean you actually have to dive. I know. You do. <laughs> How much did we make? <laughs> Can you believe this is the only job we could get? I got 20 years experience running a family business, but no frickin' references. You know who'd have been a good reference? Don Gambini. He thought the world of you. Until you whacked him. Welcome to Blue Ball Ranch, boys. What we do here is extract bull semen for export. And how exactly do we do that? Same way you do at home. You mean in front of the window? With the neighbors watching? <laughs> Oh, God, my arm is tired. Your arm? 32 bucks, that's it? A broad who does the same job gets at least 80 bucks an hour. 100 if she does it like Cheech. I still don't understand what your job is, Jimmy. I don't bring my work home, unless it gets on my shirt. Well, you gotta find something else. We're barely scraping by. We can't pay our bills, and now Cheech is eating dog food. It makes my coat shiny. Cook, this is temporary. We'll get through it. Have I ever let you down? Not until now you haven't. What's this? A pawn shop ticket. I hawked my engagement ring to buy groceries. You did what? Well, someone has to provide for this family, and right now that someone ain't you. I can't believe you sold it without talking to me. I was hungry. I couldn't think straight. I know things are bad, but look on a bright side. They can't possibly get worse. And they just got worse. Jesus, Jimmy, I'm blind. This is what we get for messing with them bulls. Are you kidding me? What? I saw candles. I thought romance was in the air, along with a hint of lavender. That's Cheech, burning furniture to stay warm. And you can forget fooling around. The mortgage company's breathing down our necks. If we don't pay on time, we lose the house. Ten minutes of sweaty groping ain't gonna help. Can't hurt. What, so now you won't sleep with me because I got no money? I won't sleep with you because I got no ring. It'd be a sin. What about our vows? For richer and for poorer. I'm an Italian girl from Brooklyn. I cross my fingers during the poorer part. What about during the obey part? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the couch, ain't I? Hey, where'd you get all that money? Do I ask you about your business? Listen, kid, you think you could loan me a few bucks? I might be able to help you out. You're a lifesaver. At 18%? What? That's crazy! That's highway robbery! That's... That's my girl. If you don't mind my saying, Pop, you're stooping pretty low borrowing money off a kid. Tell me about it, but I don't know what else to do. You can act like a man! Where? I don't know what else to do. Get out there, pull some jobs. 
There's banks, liquor stores, convenience stores, credit unions. And that's just robberies. You could be out there running numbers, pimping broad, selling protection, but instead you're sitting around like a schmuck. I don't even know you anymore. Jeez, maybe she's right. I got it. Ow! Oh, Jesus! Ah, Jimmy, I've been concerned about your descent into abject poverty. How are things? To be honest, which is hard for me around cops, not too good. You're not considering a return to a life of crime, are you? To be dishonest, which is way more up my alley, no, not at all. Take solace, Jimmy. Sweet Mother Canada stands at the bottom of the abyss, waiting to cradle you in the silky embrace of her social safety net. Say again, in American? Tomorrow, I want you to march down to the Service Canada office and apply for employment insurance. What the hell is that? It's just like unemployment insurance, except they put a positive spin on the name so the indigent don't feel like enormous blood-sucking leeches. Which, of course, they are not. Who sucked what? Trust me, Jimmy, your adopted nation has your back. For Canada, where you can get money for nothing, but the chicks aren't free! <laughs> That didn't work. Next. Go on, Petey. I'm not sure about this. I love experiments. I just don't want to be experimented on. If you don't, Petey, they'll do it on an innocent little animal. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Great. How'd it go? I feel surprisingly fine. At first I was scared, but after the probe, everything went dark That's and- That's great. Where do we get paid? Will there be any side effects from this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. It says here you quit your full-time job, which means you're ineligible for employment insurance. Who, me? I didn't quit. I quit. So you're telling me I don't even qualify for a handout? Next in line. Yeah, but- Next! All right, my wife don't respect me, my daughter thinks I'm a schmuck, and I'm gonna lose my house. Time to go back to work. And by work, I mean crime. Crime? Why didn't you think of that before? The answer was right in front of you. Sometimes I wonder about you, Jimmy. You know, I'm starting to think you care more about money than you do about saving the Earth. That's ridiculous. I totally care about the Earth. I also care about the Russian businessman who lives on the Earth and happens to need your kidney. My what? <gasps> Are you guys going to take long? Of course not. Now we must take organs while fresh. <laughs> Hey, sleepyhead. So, 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 so cold. Yeah, about that. I had a slight miscommunication with these guys. I thought they were just taking a kidney, but they wanted everything. Heart, lungs, even your doodad, which the one guy wanted for a necklace. What? But I couldn't let them do it. Oh, thank God. Petey, I may have been using your dumb infatuation with the Earth to get important things like money, and I'm sorry. I know, it's okay. In the end, you stuck up for your little brother, which warms my frozen heart. Your heart could have got me 10 grand, but I'm glad it's still inside you. Ah! You're freezing, you little freak! You're trying to kill me! Man, I've been keeping a lid on my criminal side so long, I feel rusty. Ah, that's better. I could rob that jewelry store or snatch that lady's purse Hell, I could do both. Rob that jewelry store and then carry the jewels home in the purse. Good thinking, Jimmy boy. Nah, if I'm gonna do this, gotta be something big. Bingo. Oh man, what the hell am I doing? What are you waiting for? Some idiot left the keys in a truck full of money. Don't do it, Jimmy. If you get caught, that will mean the end of your witness protection. I ain't getting caught. But if you do, I can no longer protect you. Like you need this Gavon to protect you. Jimmy, you would be endangering the lives of your family. 
McCool's right, Jimmy. Yeah, Pop, don't do it. It is a lot of money, though. Teresa! I'm just saying. What? You guys took all the good costumes. All right, I made up my mind. I'm pretty sure I can risk it. Jimmy, no! But I won't risk it for my family. I already put them through this once. I ain't gonna do it again. Hurry! Oh, Canada! Hurry up and steal the truck. I need booze money. I just hallucinated little people crawling all over you. Hey! Some idiot left the keys in this truck. Well, Jimmy, I guess it's back to jerking bulls. Remember the old days when we were short on cash? We'd just throw a junior good fella under a bus and fleece the transit company for the insurance. Oh, yeah. The good old days. Can I wash these down with a little scotch? Nope. Doctor's orders. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, Cook. I got you a little something. Oh, Jimmy. I love you. Jesus Christ. Give me a bottle. I'm hallucinating again. La 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 la